Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. Hello everybody. Uh, today we will be starting uh, the little match girl as I had promised you as you had asked for. Okay. So we will start that. But before that the last class is transformation of sentences. The question that I asked you was as soon as the boy got the ball he started playing with it. What do you have to do in this sentence? You have to begin it with no sooner. So no sooner did the boy get the ball than he started playing with it. Om um, Prakash uh, you have written it correctly because uh, the sentence that you have written is perfectly framed. Okay. However, the thing is, uh, you have written, I'll read your sentence once, no sooner did the boy get the ball than he started playing with it. So this is perfectly correct. Second, there are many who will write it in the present form. Okay, but that is incorrect. If you write no sooner does the boy get the ball wrong. If you write no sooner the boy got the ball, that is also wrong because you have to use the helping verb. Okay, you have to see which tense it is. And second, uh, you have to use the helping verb or the auxiliary okay so this way you have to frame these sentences and next today we we'll move on to oh yes om prakash and uh, varalakshmi deepika you have also tried om prakash's answer is correct varalakshmi a little bit you have to try a bit harder okay and uh, next we will move on to the little match girl now little match girl we will talk about the victorian era the treatment of children at that time which is the theme of the story okay which is the backdrop of the story and we will go on discussing the theme and the other topics in the full video it is a big one first we have discussed the chapter line by line word by word and then we have all the questions that may come like themes style symbol everything title okay so you follow that till the end and then if you have any problem uh, do ask me in the comment section okay so let's start the little match girl written by hans christian anderson before we start with this story what we will have to know is this story is based in the period of the victorian era which means during the rule of queen victoria this this was the time in which this story was written okay why is this period so important because this period talks about the capitalism rise of capitalism which caused a lot of trouble to the people who were poor okay there was the upper class and lower class discrimination and the people who belonged to the lower class they were exploited their children were asked to work day in and day out they had to earn for their family and they were abused they were beaten and they were deprived of food and any type of necessity like dress food etc so we will talk about one such you know charles dickens is oliver twist oliver twist is another such young child who was deprived of everything that a that a child requires that you as a child require so in the same way here the little match girl is not given any particular name you see we don't talk about and we don't talk about uh, sita geeta or anybody we don't we do not have a particular name throughout the story which is assigned to the little match girl she is just a little match girl why because people who belonged to this strata or people who were as poor as this girl all the children of that period of that class lower class were deprived in the same way as this girl so she represents her class the young ones of her of her lower class okay so that is why no uh, name is given to her she is generalized and her exploitation her uh, sadness her worries all this talk about the people and the problems that these children used to face at that time okay so let's start it was so terribly cold so it, we are talking about a very cold winter night snow was falling and it was almost dark it was dark and there was snowfall you we are talking about a time and a place which is extremely cold unlike us we have a very cool winter isn't it but in these places it was extremely cold it is extremely cold even now in the winter season this part of the time is compared to death it is so cold all leaves fall everything dries up people die if they stay outside of the house okay so this is the situation it was dark evening came on on the last evening of the year that means it was the last evening the year is going to end this is 31st of december 
In the cold and gloom, a poor little girl, bareheaded and barefoot, was walking through the streets. Of course, when she had left her house, she had her slippers on. But what good had they been? So you see that this is a poor girl who was walking bareheaded and barefoot. That means she did not have anything to cover her head. She did not have anything to cover her feet. It was bitterly cold, and she was out there tolerating everything. And she was walking through the streets. Then you, from here, you can understand she had some. desire or she wanted to have something for which she could not go back home before getting that okay so of course when she had left her house she had her slippers on but what good had they been so when she was coming out of her house she had her slippers but it was no use to her why they were very big slippers way too big for her for they belonged to her mother imagine she did not have a pair of slippers of her own the slipper was so big the slipper that she was wearing when she came out of the house was so big that it was her mother's and she is a very young girl so she could not fit into this slipper this this was too big for her and so what had happened the little girl had lost them running across the road where two carriages had rattled that means they were making sharp sounds rattle by terrible terribly fast that means two carriages okay this is a carriage and this carriage two of them were racing with each other okay and what had happened she was trying to cross the road from this side and when she was very afraid because two carriages were racing with each other she was very afraid while she was crossing she started running and she had lost one slipper one slipper she had not been able to find again and a boy had run off with the other saying he could use it very well as a cradle some day when he had a children of his own so now young children of her age even this boy imagine this boy is taking away such an old wretched torn slipper why because these children were so poor they collected everything that they found anywhere else okay because they thought that this could help them in some way or the other so it is better to take away anything that they finds on find on the road okay so he takes away the other slipper that that he found okay one he had one the girl had already lost while crossing the road because she was afraid okay uh being hit by the vehicle and the other one she had lost how this young boy had taken that slipper away saying that he will use it as a cradle for a young child for her young child and so the little girl walked on her naked feet which were quite red and blue with the cold if it is very cold if you visit some mountain if you try to walk bare feet over there you will feel that it is extremely cold and your fingers your toes will be numb completely you won't have any sensation over there so same thing happened to her in an old apron she carried several packages of matches and she held a box of them in her hand no one had brought bought any from her all day long and no one had given her a cent so nobody has paid or bought any matches from her she she what does she do why is she out in the cold because she could not sell any match matchstick that day any match box that day so the problem is she has earned not even a cent she had earned no money at all so she cannot go back home without earning any money therefore she was outside in the bitter cold walking bare feet and bare headed trying to earn at least some money to take back to her to her family shivering with cold and hunger she crept along a picture of misery poor little girl she was she was herself a picture of misery a picture of suffering look at this young girl she is sitting she is so cold and hungry she is so cold and so hungry that she just creeps along she cannot even walk properly the snow flakes fell on her long hair uh, long fair hair which hung in pretty curls over her neck so she is not that she is she looks very bad she is beautiful she has beautiful curly hair she is fair her, her hair is fair and she is beautiful but she is so hungry she is deprived of food and any happiness any necessity that she looks dirty and her appearance may not be that beautiful in all the windows lights were shining and there was a wonderful smell of roast goose for it was new year's eve yes she thought of that so now imagine one part of the society is enjoying the christmas eve enjoying 31st 31st december and the other part of the same society is shivering out in the cold without any cap without any slipper at all okay 
Can you imagine the difference? One part of the society, children within the house are enjoying roast goose and they are they have decorated their house so beautifully because of Christmas, and the other part they are suffering, suffering and only suffering. So, in a corner formed by two houses, one of which projected further out into the street than the other, she sat down and drew up her little feet under her. So, she found a house which was, uh, there were two houses, one a bit, a bit uh, protruding a bit more than the other and there was a corner created which could save her from the extreme windy climate. So, she sat down with her little feet under her. So she huddled herself together. She curled herself together so that she could keep herself warm as you see in this picture. She was getting colder and colder but did not dare to go home for she had sold no matches nor earned a single cent and her father would surely beat her. Besides, it was cold at home for they had nothing over them but a roof through which the wind whistled even though the biggest cracks had been stuffed with straw and rags. So there are two reasons for which she, see there are many of you who ask for questions. I discuss the questions as I go on discussing the chapter. Okay, follow it so that you will be, then you will be able to understand that which are the important parts, what are the important questions that can be set from here. So first, you can be asked that why did the little child not return? To, his, to her home. First point is she did not dare to go back home because she had her father over there who would beat her for not earning any money at all. Okay. Second reason is the house was not a good home. The house had all these openings around. Okay. So even if she went home, she could not, she would, she would not find it warm enough. The home was as good as living on the street because the home had lots of uh, cracks that means openings that uh, over here and there that were stuffed with straw and rags okay but it did not offer her enough warmth it was not warm enough cold winds entered the house even then that is why she found it better to stay out on the street her hands were almost dead with cold so, because it was extremely cold, all her hand and feet were cold. Oh, how much one little match might warm her if she could only take one from the box and rub it against the wall and warm her hands. She drew one out. Scratch. How it spluttered. That means when you strike one match against that match box, it will make a sound, isn't it? Like an explosive sound and, and the stick will start burning. So it started burning. She felt that I have a match sticks with me. So if I burn one of them, it will give me a little bit of warmth at least for a few seconds. So let me do that. It made a warm bright flame like a little candle as she held her hands over it. But it gave a strange light. So now with the warmth from the match stick, what was also offered to her? There was a little bit of light from the match stick, isn't it? When you strike a match stick, you will find there is a light as well as warmth from that fire burning, isn't it? So now, why is this a strange light? Because in that light, she has a certain hallucinations. You start hallucinating. You see certain things which is actually not there. Okay, so she also starts hallucinating. What does she see? It really seemed to the little girl as if she were sitting before a great iron stove with shining brass knobs and a brass cob. So this is what she sees. The first hallucination is this. When she strikes the first match, she sees an iron stove. Why do you think she suddenly sees this iron stove? Because she wants that warmth that one can derive from this iron stove, isn't it? When things burn within this iron stove, what do you feel? You feel warm in a very cold winter night, isn't it? So she wanted to feel that warmth. She was extremely cold. That was her desire, her want, isn't it? So she imagined that first. How wonderfully the fire burned. How comfortable it was. The youngster stretched out her feet to warm them too. Then the little flame went out. The stove vanished. And she had only the remains of the burnt match in her hand. Now as soon she was hallucinating in such detail, she saw the iron stove just placed in front of her her with the fire burning in it. So she was so excited. She felt that, okay, now I can warm my cold body. She stretched her hand and feet out to warm her body. As soon as she did that, the flame vanished because it was just the light of a matchstick. How long will it burn? Just for a few seconds. So just after those few seconds, the stove, the iron stove vanished. Okay. Next, she struck another match against the wall. Now, 
you will be asked questions like what was her first uh, vision or what was her first hallucination then you have to write about the iron stove these are symbolic visions why does she see the iron stove because she imagines or she desires warmth in that extreme winter cold okay that is why she sees it she wishes for warmth warmth and also some love from people there, there is nobody to love her or feel for her isn't it the society is such that people are enjoying their lives within their house christmas eve and she is out there without any proper cloth proper shoe proper uh, cap in that cold okay so people in the society the, the people at that time were not at all empathetic or sympathetic towards these people outside isn't it that is also what we are talking about deprived of love she was deprived of love and she wished for that warmth of love coming to the second vision she struck another match against the wall it burned brightly and when the light fell upon the wall it became transparent like a thin veil and she could see through into the room now what happens you have seen this picture isn't it you have seen this girl sitting just by the side of a wall of the other house so this wall became like a transparent wall okay just like a thin cloth which is a see through cloth we can see the other side through the cloth isn't it so the wall became like that and what happened is the girl could see whatever was happening inside that house what did she see on the table a snow white cloth was spread and on it stood a shining dinner service so inside that house there was this table set and there was a beautiful beautiful dishes served on the table because you see it was the 31st of december there was you know there was party going on in the house so beautiful dishes were served on the table so the roast goose steamed gloriously stuffed with apples and prunes so you know prunes that is aloo bukhara what we call it it is a dried plum so everything it was decorated the roast goose was decorated with apples and prunes and there were forks and spoons around it okay it was decorated and what was still better the goose jumped down from the dish and waddled along the floor with the knife and fork in its breast right over to the little girl so what happened was directly what she saw in that light was she was hallucinating this was not real she saw that this dish just had wings the goose had the wings and it started flying with a fork and spoon and it was coming all through the wall piercing the wall towards her okay why did she see this vision now this is very very easy because she was very hungry she was deprived of food she wanted something to something to eat okay she could smell the beautiful and and the delicious dishes isn't it even if you are outside a house you can smell isn't it the uh, uh, biryani being cooked or anything being cooked so that smell she could get that smell from outside so she imagined having those delicious food okay then the match went out and she could see only the thick cold wall she lighted another match so again the same thing happened the uh, matchstick burned for a few seconds she saw whatever she uh, whatever was there within the wall inside the wall and then it vanished then the match went out and she could see only the thick cold wall she lighted another match now she could not see anything the wall had become rigid again it was no more transparent now she lighted another match now the third vision then she was sitting under the most beautiful christmas tree this is the image for you see what did she see now when she strikes another match she sees this christmas tree you know beautiful christmas tree is decorated when uh, in the in the christmas time okay so the christmas she saw the beautiful christmas tree decorated with stars balls lights and everything she had seen last christmas through the glass door at the rich merchant's home so she has she has an idea of what happens during christmas how people decorate their house with the christmas tree thousands of candles burn on the green branches and colored pictures like those in the print shops looked down at her so she had seen those pictures hanging from the print shops also decorated christmas tree she has seen them now you tell me why do why does she have this vision of a christmas tree christmas tree is an evergreen tree when every tree loses its leaves become dried up okay in the winter season leaves fall off and get dried up the christmas tree continues to retain its leaves it still have those beautiful leaves on it okay so christmas tree is 
is a symbol of endurance of accepting the difficulties of enduring the difficulties of being victorious okay this is the symbol of a christmas tree so she wanted to fight the cold little girl saw the christmas tree because she wanted to enjoy most importantly like the young children like the rich young children but she also wanted to endure the bitter cold she wanted to fight it but she was very much incapable of that it was extremely cold outside she wanted to stand bravely like the christmas tree in the cold but she could not okay the little girl reached both her hands towards them so she wanted to touch the christmas tree then the match went out but the christmas lights mounted higher so now the difference from the other vision is that everything vanishes as soon as the match stick stops burning but this time the christmas lights there is a lot of there are lights around the christmas tree isn't it so these lights remained although the christmas tree vanished the lights remained and what happened she saw them now as bright stars in the sky one of them fell down forming a long like line of fire so she sees a long like the christmas lights they moved up in the sky and formed lines of fire on the sky now someone is dying what does she feel this is this is a uh, even uh, she had a belief that when there was a falling star then a a person died okay a person went to god so now someone is dying thought the little girl for her old grandmother the only person who had loved her and who was now dead had told her that when a star fell down a soul went up to god this was a popular belief by her grandmother and her grandmother is dead now her grandmother was the only one who loved her okay she had got no love from anybody except her grandmother and her grandmother is also dead she is now with the gods and her grandmother used to tell her that when you see a falling star it means that some soul or some person is going to die and going close to god when she dies her soul will go to god okay this was her grandmother's belief so she also starts believing that okay i see a falling star that means somebody is going to god now somebody is going to die today she rubbed another match against the wall it became bright again and in the glow the gold, the old grandmother stood clear and shining kind and lovely now imagine the last vision is what grandmother because she was deprived of love nobody loved the little child so she imagines her grandmother who was the only one who loved her grandmother cried the child oh take me with you i know you will disappear when the match is burned out now the child is well aware that these are just hallucinations or visions this is not real everything will vanish as soon as the match stops burning so she says that grandmother please take me away with with you because i cannot accept this that you will vanish as soon as the match stick stops burning so you i don't want you to disappear i want you in my life so you take me to god because you are with god you take me there i want to die and be with you you will vanish like the warm stove the wonderful roast goose and the beautiful big christmas tree so you will also vanish like all that i saw a few minutes back i don't want to lose you again so she quickly struck the whole bundle of matches for she wished to keep her grandmother with her so she strikes all the matches together so that she could keep her grandmother for a little time longer uh, and the matches burned with such a glow that it became brighter than daylight grandmother had never been so grand and beautiful so in that in that light of the match sticks she could see her grandmother in a very bright light she seemed just like an angel to her okay what did the little girl wish for she just wished for a little bit of love that she was deprived nobody was there to love her except her grandmother who was also dead so she wanted to go to heaven with her so that she could be close to her and be loved okay and both of them flew in brightness and joy above the earth very very high and up there was neither cold nor hunger nor fear they were with god so what do we see over here that the little child goes away her her grandmother takes little child away with her very high up in the sky close to god okay just like a fairy just like a fairy godmother she takes the little child away with her because when she was alive when the little child was alive she was deprived of everything she was hungry she had to she had to be hungry throughout she had to suffer the cold suffer hunger she was afraid of her father of being beaten up by her father 
so she did not have a good life so her grandmother took her away with her so that when they when they are close to god when they are in the lap of god god will love them unlike the human beings who never love these people who never love the lower class people and when god does not differentiate between a rich and poor so when they are close to god that means when the young child is dead and she is close to god then god will protect her and keep her happy and love her okay so if she was not happy in this world at least when she dies and gets closer to god god will love her okay but in the uh, but in the corner leaning against the wall sat the little girl with red cheeks and smiling mouth frozen to death on the last evening of the old year the new year's sun rose upon little pathetic figure the child sat there stiff and cold holding the matches of which one bundle was almost born so she had burned one bundle completely because she was seeing those visions in that matchstick light so that one was completely born so in the morning when people uh, wake woke up they found that this girl was lying stiff and cold that means she was dead she still held the matches in her hand that she was selling and one was burned completely so what did uh, people uh, see she wanted to warm herself the people said no one imagined what beautiful things she had seen and how happily she had gone with her old grandmother into the bright new year so this is a bright new year not only for the people but also for the young girl because at least when she is dead she it will be a new start for her it will be a new day just like a bright new year a, a new year is a gives new life and brings new happiness to people to this young girl or the lower class people it is never happiness isn't it even if a new year comes there is no new happiness offered to them they always have to be poor always have to suffer so when the child dies with the start of the new year at the start of the new year when the child dies it seems she would at least have a better life when she is with god or when she is dead at least she will not have to suffer such bitter cold and hunger and such uh, you know such a pathetic attitude of the people around her who do not even care whether who never cared to look outside their house where a girl was suffering so much they were busy enjoying their day they were busy enjoying their evening out uh, in the the christmas evening and being happy okay when somebody died outside shivering in the cold okay so from here we come to know about the pathetic attitude of the people in the victorian era of the higher class people so the poet gives a moral to the story that we need to be sympathetic to the people who suffer who are not as privileged as we are okay so this is what we are talking about over here yes most importantly i will also talk about the important questions in this video itself so you continue following i think up to this the chapter is clear to you if this much is clear or if you have any problem up to this you can obviously write to me in the comment section if any word or any line is difficult to you you can write to me there and next we will move on to the important questions the themes the victorian society okay from their questions will come so if you want you can obviously write those important uh, notes down in your copies because i am sure that questions will be set from those places the symbols the themes and the others okay let's move on to that now as i have already discussed the story we will move on to the notes first the title see i am doing everything every part of this chapter over here only in this single video but your work is to write these down because i am not go i i am not going to provide you with a pdf because you see i have a lot of notes to prepare for my school for my students for you all for everybody that is why i do not you can understand that i will not have so much space in my laptop i'll not be able to provide you with a pdf but because i'm i have everything written down over here you do not have to listen to anything and write it down directly you have everything written down over here you copy this notes at least the notes if not the meanings or the other things that is required the best possible thing you can do is you can write down the notes because that would be beneficial to you whatever i'm telling you i can give you a guarantee that if you, if you follow everything that i say you will score at least 90 to 94% if you can follow everything okay if you can follow the pattern in which you have to write the answers so coming to the title 
The title The Little Match Girl is quite an apt title as it revolves around a little girl who sells matches. Why do you think that The Little Match Girl is a suitable title? First, because we are talking about a little girl who sells matches. This is point number one. You will not write in points. You will write in the way that I have written. The author has, there are certain more a uh, few uh, reasons for which the title is appropriate. What is that? The author has not given a name to the match girl. See, I've already discussed this. Why I have written it for you? Just for your benefit, so that you get an answer that is already prepared, okay? So the author has not given a name to the match girl, which indicates that she was just one of the many poor children belonging to the lower rung of the society. One of the many is the important word over here. That she is anybody, anybody of that lower class, everybody shared the same uh, life like her pathetic life like her she was troubled she was deprived of food and everything was same with all people all children in the society that is why she represents her uh, she represents her society that is why no name is given to her so during the victorian era who had to face the hardships because of poverty you have to mention this word victorian era because that is the period when people were deprived so much she was subjected to beating and abuse at home. This was also a very uh, crucial situation of all uh, uh, lower class uh, children who were abused, beaten. Because there was no money in the home, people were annoyed. People wanted their children to earn money. Okay. She dared not go back home even when it was so cold outside. She preferred dying outside than going back to her home. Imagine she did not go back her home because she did not find it safe enough or su not suitable enough to go back. Okay, we normally find it safest to go back home, but she preferred dying outside. When the little child was alive, trying hard to sell her matches, nobody cared to pay attention or help her. But when her frozen body was found next morning, people stopped to look at her stiff and cold body. This highlights, this I've already told you, the apathetic attitude of the wealthy towards the poor and the issues of social classification, poverty and child abuse. Huge this was a huge trouble at that time. There was discrimination in the society. There was poverty. There was child abuse, beatings and everything happening around. Okay. The word match is also important over here because it does not just mean that this, these are the matchsticks which gave her those beautiful hallucinations. Okay. This also has a very symbolic meaning. What is that? It is a symbol of warmth and hope. It not just gives you warmth, but also gives you a hope of a better life, which may, like she was first seeing the stove, uh, that she would be warm now. She would, she saw the food because she was hungry. She was hoping for all that, isn't it? She saw her grandmother because she was hoping for love. So the light reminds her the love she received from her grandmother. The light and warmth from the matches gave her hope to live and endure the cold and hunger in the world. And if impossible in this world, at least in the other world. If, if it was impossible for her to get a better life in this world, at least after death, she tells her grandmother to take her with her. Because she feels that at least after death, she would have a better life. Okay. Coming to the next point, visions and symbols. Now, I told you, whatever vision she has, everything has a symbolic meaning. You will be asked the symbols, the symbolic meanings. The first vision, the large stove, depicts what? Her longing for warmth as well as love of her family. She, wa she wanted warmth because she was very cold. And she also wanted love because she was deprived of love too. Second vision, a feast laid on a table. I'm going a bit fast because you see, I've already discussed these points. This is just a written note so that you can copy. A feast laid on the table shows the need of a poor hungry child to eat and relish a delicious meal which only the rich could enjoy. So this is a delicious meal which she sees. She can, she was aware of it from the scent, from the smell, but she never enjoyed it. She could never eat it because it was only for the rich. The vision shows how hungry she is. So this is, a, this is an idea that she's actually very hungry. That is why she is imagining such stuff. If she did not freeze, she would surely have died of starvation. She was so hungry, if she had not died by freezing outside, she would have died of hunger. Third vision, the Christmas tree, this depicts her longing, her desire for celebration and enjoyment. She's young. She wanted to enjoy like the other children, isn't it? Like us. 
so uh, from here you also have to remember that you can add that point where we are talking about the christmas tree which talks about endurance which is an image or symbol of uh, of hope of uh, of an evergreen happy life of enduring the extreme cold just like the young girl did outside trying hard to fight the cold so you can write this also coming to the fourth vision is her grandmother the only person who loved her she pleaded to take her to heaven depicting her desire to be one with her true relative there is nobody who loves her in this world why will she stay back neither the people in the society loves her nor her father loves her why will she stay over here so she wishes to go away with her grandmother if not in if not uh, being alive she wants to die and go with her so that god can save her from her suffering okay next we will move on to the themes these are the symbols done title done next we are moving on to themes this is also another significant part of a chapter we have to know what themes are discussed in the story okay the first one is class differentiation the story portrays a realistic and crude view of the society in the victorian era we are repeatedly talking about class differentiation when people are aware of this difference that there is a huge amount of difference between the two segments of people the higher class and the lower class and this underclass people who are constantly deprived of food basic necessities we know about them but we do not care about them that is the condition of the society so we are again talking about during the victorian era the middle class emerged and took over an important percentage of workplaces it is at this time that there appeared this underclass which remained unemployed and lived in abject poverty they were extremely poor and they had to suffer this okay there existed a huge gap another important point be between the financial condition of this class and the wealthy so there was a huge gap between these two classes this class differentiation is reflected through the character of the little girl why do we talk about this little girl because she identifies this difference where nobody cares about her next in the victorian era the children were regarded by such people as miniature adults why adults because they also had to earn for their family who were used for cheap labor now why were they they are easy uh, uh, tools for exploitation isn't it young children young people don't know that they are being exploited if they are asked to work for 20 hours in a day they will keep on working because they are not aware of it okay at times these children were made to sell matches as a front for their actual begging so if people did not want their children to beg they gave them little things to sell but actually they were begging only dickens oliver twist highlights these problems of the poor city children who after the poor law act of 1833 end up in the workhouse so even in dickens charles dickens is oliver twist we find this that after the poor law act of 1833 this young children were doubly deprived they were neglected and abused as the match girl in this story same is the situation of other children in the victorian era next we will move to faith and hope the little child constantly constantly was brave enough to have that faith in god that at least she will be uh, if she endures such cold and hunger she will be given a better life she did not give up despite hardships she suffered so much but she did not give up she still hoped for a better life she tried to keep herself warm by lighting matches whatever thing she had she tried to use it and keep herself warm and survived the pangs of cold and hunger in fact she found hope in the image of her loving grandmother she also saw her loving grandmother she felt that at least she will be getting some love from her okay to keep her grandmother near her she died in the cold winter but with a smile on her face depicting her happiness on being with her grandmother and god this shows that she is still hopeful that at least if she does not get that happiness when she is alive she will at least get the love when she is dead and unites with her grandmother and god okay so these two are the most important things we talk about here coming to the last part of this chapter these are contrasting images very very important first the class differentiation it is full of stark contrast just like this victorian era where there were privileged people like us and there were that underclass where 
like the little girl they were deprived of everything so there is a difference in the society when you wear a black pant and a white shirt you see the difference isn't it there is a stark difference between the two colors in the same way to help us realize the difference of the society the difference of the conditions of people to help us realize the pathetic situation they were living in we have been given the two sides of the society we see the best and we see the worst and what happens within us we develop empathy a sympathy for these people okay which the victorian period was completely devoid of they were apathetic they did not feel for the other class they did not feel how what a bad life they were leading so sympathy is important empathy is very important okay so with these contrasting images we will be growing sympathy and empathy within us okay so indifference and love see the treatment of the treatment the girl received from her father made her choose to stay in the cold outside than going back home this is indifference her father did not care whether she died outside or whether she was suffering outside or abused outside she did not care she her, the father herself abused her beat her up and that is why she did not want to return home whereas her grandmother she she is symbolic of the love her father is indifference and grandmother is love so the tenderness and love she used to receive from her when she was alive that was the only human being from where she derived love the little girl is ready to leave this world with the only one who cared for her so she is she nobody loves her so so she wants to die and go with her grandmother just for that bit of love that she got from her grandmother coming to the next two parts poverty and wealth you see poverty and wealth these two again in this in the victorian era we find a stark difference some people are extremely wealthy who are enjoying their christmas parties and enjoying their luxurious meals isn't it other part of the city and there are there are people like this little girl who is deprived of the basic necessities of life okay so these are the two stark differences that we find first stark difference second stark difference that we find they did not and these people the rich ones did not bother to look once at this young girl who shivered to death just outside their house they were not bothered who died outside their house who suffered okay life and death you see the third one the last one of contrasting image life and death life for the little girl was full of sufferings normally we say that life is good and death is bad but for the little girl when she was alive she had to bear the cold stay hungry get beaten up abused every day okay so she felt in her death she would have a better life unlike normal people who would feel that life is good and death is bad to her death is good and she died with a smile on her face which proved that she was finally happy because she unites with the one who loved her her grandmother and god away from the sufferings of this cruel world so this was a, actually a happy new year for her okay coming to the i'm very sorry this is uh, the contrasting image was not the last one style is the last one this is the last thing we will do today and that is all for this chapter okay you will not have to prepare anything else i have con- i have summarized and detailed on every topic that is important from uh, this chapter okay you'll find everything here in another video maybe i'll do the questions which are important from here and the answers to those questions is here only okay do not worry and there are some of you who are asking me certain questions you will find those answers in the comment section you can follow it from there and if you have any other question you can obviously mail me my mail id is given and uh, few of you were asking for uh, online classes and yes i will be providing it i am providing it to few of my youtube students and as well as others uh so for that you will have to mail to me and then i will have to talk with you okay so that is a thing and next we will move on to style symbols iron stove symbolic of the warmth and safety which she longed for and it reminded her of the love and affection she got from her grandmother so iron stove i already told you this is a symbol of warmth and safety and love that she had once got from her grandmother but there was nobody else to give her that next the christmas tree i have explained you two or three times again i have written it down here just i'll read it once for you the evergreen christmas tree is a sign of undying life rebirth stamina endurance 
that even in the winter months the christmas tree has its leaves intact in the same way it is a symbol for the little girl who tries to survive just like the tree the bitter cold night lighting the matches okay coming to the falling star what is it a symbol of symbol of soul ascending to god it is already written in the story that when a person dies the grandmother believed that whenever whenever this falling star was seen that somebody died on the earth and went to god this was their belief okay so the visions of the little girl warmed from cold and of love good food and happy so you see there is another idea over here that if a person made a wish three times before the star disappeared this is a falling star you all have seen it isn't it whenever before this falling star disappears if you make three wishes then those wishes will be fulfilled so the vision of the little girl there were three wishes isn't it warmth from cold of love good food happy life there were three wishes so she could make the three wishes and this is a symbolic idea that she was going to god and she would be getting whatever she wanted okay next matches these are symbolic of warmth from cold and warmth of love normally matches will obviously is symbol of be a symbol of uh, warmth from cold okay getting away from cold being warm enough and also of love that in that light she saw her grandmother isn't it identifying love that she was longing for so the matches also symbolic of the light of god and hope coming to the last one cold this is the symbol of hardship desperation and hopelessness that there is no hope in the society nobody loves her nobody feels for the other half of the society so this is hopelessness didactic story what type of story is this this is a didactic story what does this mean that the story is trying to teach you a lesson i told you that there is this this uh, the society is apathetic towards the suffering of people they do not even look what is happening they are happy enjoying their lives they are not happy they do not want to look or help the others the for they are the fortunate ones so they do not want to help the less fortunate ones so through this contrasting image the poet is trying to teach the wealthy that they need to be empathetic for the less fortunate ones they need to be careful about those who are not so fortunate like them who do not get such good food or get such good life okay so it coaxes them to be charitable and help the poor and reduce their suffering we should always try to help others maybe we are successful in life we earn a lot but we should also try to help those who do not we are who are not so privileged that is what the poet the story the the author is trying to point out that was completely absent in the victorian society so we do not want a society like that where people will suffer outside and we won't even care okay in the times of covid this is more important we know there are people suffering outside we cannot help them directly because that is also very a, con- a contagious disease you can get that but we can try and help in every other way possible in whichever way possible in the little bit of way that you can find you should help them okay so here we come to an end with in this to this uh, chapter and uh, i hope this is clear to you and i have tried to work best so that it is clearer and if you have any problem you know what you have to do you will just have to write to me in the comment section and i'll help you out as you know okay so if you liked my video please comment subscribe and share thank you bye bye